Uh, good technique there. <coughs> right, give it, give it hell for 30. Remember to try and just stay nice and calm in your rhythm. <coughs> when you stop, stop the spindle nice and still. Stop whenever you're ready, mate. Oh, mate. doing here Andy? I'm just making a little indentation in the charga to be able to accept the bow drill uh, with the spindle of the bow drill just so it'll sit in the groove instead of slipping out and digging away There was a before. Nice one, mate. Hey, right. So that's the fire on up at base camp. Uh, fire's on. Uh, yeah, I right, saw so the fire's on. Uh, I we're now off to go and have a little bit of forage down the bottom, uh, down the bottom of the woods. Uh, we've got some wood pigeon to have. Courtesy of Mr. Alex here. Got two of them. Uh, yeah, I we've got a couple of wood pigeons shot by Alex. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna have a nice little wild feast. We've uh, seen wild garlics in early as well. You know that we've got it at the bottom, uh, the bottom end of the country. So we're gonna come in see if there's any wild garlic because I, I think that's probably all favourite edibles. Definitely. Uh, right, 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 so right, it's one of the favourites. We'll have some of that. Right. Right. Uh, I'll flip you around and bring you along for the journey. Yeah.
right there. Right there. Finally down at the bottom end of the woodland. Uh, if you want to bring yourself in. This wonderful little plant here is called Opposite Leaved Golden Saxifrage. Or Saxifridge, however you want to pronounce it. But uh, absolutely wonderful little wild edible. As you can see, it, it, it mats the floor anywhere where right next to a stream. It loves damp, moist ground. But uh, as you can see, with a clue with a name, opposite leaved. From the stem, you can see the leaves will grow out in opposite pairs. Turn it round, there you go, opposite pairs again. Even smaller opposite pairs. Uh, and that's absolutely wonderful. Wonderful to nibble on. But uh, we're going to gather some of the young fresh shoots and take that back and add that to a wild pigeon later on. Spot on. Right, from what you've just seen, they're scarlet elf cups. Uh, where Alex, who's got the camera, uh, the man who found them, uh, absolutely crack and fine, mate. Uh, yeah, so. They like to grow they like dead rotten hardwood, really mossy areas. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna take some of these and chuck some of these in the pan as well. Right, we've got some velvet shanks here. Now they look a bit older, they've uh, lost the velvet look on the top of them, but you can tell that they are velvet shanks by, let's pull them off, you've got your dark stem and you've also got the white gills as well there. You've got to make sure that you aren't con confusing these with sulphur tufts, but these go really well in stews and things like that, so we'll stick that in, along with the scarlet elf cups. We're coming into closing season now, so we've got a few there. Some of them have been nibbled by bugs, but we'll just cut them bits off because we're not really fussy. We'll put right. that into a stew as well. We are. That's what we've got so far. A few scarlet elf cups and opposite leaved as well. So, yeah, we're starting to fill with tin. Alright, uh, we're still down at the bottom end here. Uh, we just found a nice little wet patch to get some hairy bittercress. It's got like a lovely peppery flavour to it, so I think it'll sort of go quite nice with the pigeon breast that we've got back up at base camp. Let's come and take a look. This year's hairy bittercress. Yes, it, even though it's called hairy bittercress, it's actually hairless. You might find a few little ones, but you'll see loads of side leaflets coming on in opposite pairs, all the way up the main stem. And then you'll always have a little terminal leaf at the end. I've just done a plant write up on my Facebook page. Uh, I'll leave that in a link in the in the video comment uh, in the description. So feel free to check that out and get more in-depth photos and an in-depth write up on it. We also managed to find some nettles as well, just some young net nettle tips, so we'll just put them in the pan there, just to sort of wilt away with the the, uh, the velvet shanks and the scarlet elf cups that were found as well. Well, we've got in this little tin, we have some, obviously we've got the fridge and some hairy bittercress as well, just as a nice little side salad. Then over here, we've got pheasant, uh, wood pigeon, just about ready. Right, here we have Alex just about to debreast the pigeon, ready to chuck in the pan with the other two. So he's just found this, like the 
much like the centre bone in the rib oh, cage. Yeah, just use the centre bone. Arc, arc and the knife in as well, just to try and get as much meat off of it as you can. Right. You're keeping your fingers out of the way and then just cutting down there. And as you can see, how nice and easy was that? Breast off, nice and a wanna. Lovely. In the pan with the others. We've got a little bit of garlic puree in there. We'll forage that. Yeah, we'll, do, we'll forage that from uh, Tesco's. Yeah. Unfortunately, wild garlic hasn't made an appearance up here just yet. There we go, that's the second one. Lovely. Heart. Yeah, heart. There's another heart there. Liver. Liver. Lovely. That's the meal actually cooked. Alex is there uh, enjoying it next to the fire. I'm not doing much talk now. No, I'm not surprised. <laughs> right, but uh, yep, we're going to tuck into this lovely feast. 